just wanted to give a little update as to what we're doing. I got my best friend sitting here next to me, full of love and resting a little bit. So handsome. Handsome Mr. Lee, we call him. Uh, we're progressing beautifully. We're helping a kid. Uh, we call him Little Diego because a guy Joe used to spar with frequently. Uh, was a big, big, tall guy. Uh, so the Diego we're working with right now, boy, he is shooting up like Trump would say, a rocket ship. Uh, he's doing great. Yesterday, he and Joe uh, sparred with him sparring hard and Joe going light with him. But I had Joe pop him a couple of times and Joe gave him a couple of brisk jabs. Joe said he went at about 30% and even with Joe's jab, that's not an easy punch to take. So kid's doing great. Kid's doing great. Can't be no more impressed with him. Uh, he wants to compete. He's small enough. He's about 120, I believe. I'm going to maybe weigh him today, and we'll verify his weight. He's about 115, 122 pounds. And uh, so he's a small enough guy that I believe they'll let him into the league boxing here. And uh, hopefully we'll get him in the league boxing. And uh, I can tell you right now, if he gets up in this state league boxing, he's just going already at three weeks in is going to literally crush the weight division that he's in. He'll he'll be crushing, and that's what we do. We uh, we go for speed and power. And of course, you don't see it with with us a lot, and especially with Joe because. He's having to go so soft with these guys. So, uh, you know the deal with Joe. We're going to end up in Cartagena to find somebody to fight. Uh, they have uh, a good little pool of professional fighters up there, and I'm going to get one of them to go through a three-rounder with Joe and tell them to fight. Uh of course, I'll require the headgear, and I'll ask the professional to not hold back, go dead on Joe, and uh, uh, but I would prefer he, which he can make that decision, but I will have headgear on Joe. Uh, uh, all these kids need to be wearing headgear when they're sparring. Um, Simple process, nothing complicated about it. Uh, we worry about head injuries and such and concussions constantly. Uh, we don't like them, we don't want to give them, and we don't want to receive them. Uh, but it's a part of boxing and you got to go through it. It's just a part of the sport, but that doesn't mean you don't try to be safe. Uh, here, they they'll get in, uh, even in this mandated league boxing that's supposedly controlled, which it's not. It's ran by a bunch of, uh, I don't know how to say it, macho lunatics to, that don't know what they're doing, that are where the trainers are in, incapable of learning anything themselves. So these kids just get in there and fight. And, uh, they, and they typically do this without headgear in the state-sponsored league boxing here. And it's just ridiculous that they do that. Uh, they're taking no care to injuries or anything like that till Joe comes along. When Joe goes there and wants to fight, everybody's big concern is brain, uh, brain injury, brain damage. Uh, as soon as he exits out the door and there's no takers, nobody will even spar with him, they're back to just hitting each other and with little to no technique, uh, little to no movement. They're just getting in there and fighting with each other. Uh, so 
we don't want to do that. But I've got Diego at the point right now. I believe I could take him down there, drop him off, and he'd lick anybody uh, 10 pounds heavier or 10 pounds lighter than him uh, in three weeks. Uh, boxing's not that complicated. You build the body, uh, which he is responding to beautifully, beautifully. Uh, this kid had nothing but meat and bones showing. And I mean meat and bones, skin and bones. And now all he's got showing is muscle and bones in three short weeks or so. Uh, we, we work, uh, we outwork everybody, everybody. <clears throat> at least in Colombia, and uh, uh, I, I know we have people that outwork us. One I could think off the top of my head, which would probably be Zeke Castro. He does a lot more road work than than we do. A uh, little more than my, he don't do that jump rope. Zeke do that jump rope. Get on that jump rope. Uh, but he more than compensates for uh, the rope work that he says he don't really commit to very much. I know he does some rope work, but he just doesn't. It's not a big part of his routine, but boy, that, that boy works. And everybody that works is uh, uh, a product of their work. You fight like you train. And if you're working harder and fight like you train, if you're being trained decently, you're going to win. There's no secret sauce to put on that hamburger. Uh, you just cook it the longest, put the most effort into cooking it, uh, put the ingredients on it, which there's no secret to, and you will win. You will win. A strong body develops a strong mind and heart in boxing, and you got to start there. If the body's weak, if you've got endurance but no strength, uh, that's not a good combination. If you've got uh, a lot of strength and no endurance, that's not a good combination. So I always say the spoils go to the to the hardest workers, and they do, they do. And we we have people we can look back on that we know this is true. Uh, people such as Mike Tyson. Uh, Larry Holmes, uh, the, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali consistently outworked uh, uh, everyone, everyone. Uh, and that's what you got to do. Uh, Marvin Hagler, best worker in the business. You ask anybody. He worked harder than any of them, any of us. Uh, so... Uh, to the victor goes the spoils, and to the hardest, the hardest worker is the victor. And uh, so I wanted to lay that out there. So I want to get back on Diego. Joe hit him with a couple uh, pretty stiff jabs yesterday. And, uh, well, he even uh, hit him in the body a couple of times. And uh, the kid went down now. Let me tell you that. He went down. Uh, but he got right back up and continued. They had eight good rounds. Uh, uh, and, of course, it helps Joe, too, because although Joe really can't hit him back uh, in, in an aggressive way uh, or go full with his speed on, uh, it's working Joe to move and whatnot. So it helps, it helps both of them out. But we are very proud of Diego and the work he has accomplished in such a short period of time. This kid is very special and uh, uh, he's got a, a warrior's heart and the courage of a lion. And he was very nervous and very scared yesterday. And guess what? Uh, the guy that tells you he doesn't get nervous or scared is a fool. He's either mentally ill uh, and unable to have emotions, uh, such as a psychopath or something, but uh, uh, a, a normal man and strong men 
uh, have fear and they utilize that fear. And he conquered his yesterday. I didn't tell him the day before that we were going to spar yesterday. Um, haven't told him today, but he's, they're going to be sparring a little bit more. We're going to spar today, this afternoon. I'll get you guys some f footage and put a video tape up of it. Uh, and if you go back and you look, you'll see the improvement in Diego. A big improvement. Uh, Joe, he went down twice now because Joe really clocked him. Joe clocked him in the, in the lower chin with a, a, a good brisk, and it was brisk, a brisk jab. Uh, wasn't everything Joe had. I believe Joe can knock people out with his jab. I'm not exaggerating that. Uh, but he hit the kid uh, pretty brisk in the lower chin here, and it jerked him back, and his legs gave. Uh, pulled his mask together. Uh, I said, you want to stop? He was like, no. I was like, don't be a man here. This ain't the place to flex uh, a macho attitude. This is, you don't have to do that here with us. And he was like, no, I want to keep going. And he did. And Joe caught him in the midsection once and he uh, went down then. So, but he continued on. And, uh, Joe, was it eight or nine rounds that you guys did? Was it eight? I think it was eight. It was eight? Yeah, we believe we did eight. We believe we did three, uh, three, and then two. Uh, so uh, that's what he's thinking it was, too. So I don't think I did three at the end. Uh, but we had him good and wore out. I mean, breathing. And uh, been running these boys and... Uh, Spent with Diego, I've been trying to build strength, something which has developed very, very quickly. It can be developed in any boxer. Uh, there is a natural gift that some guys get, a natural punching ability. You add on, you work with that, you got a hell of a, uh, a slugger. But for those that are not born with that, you can drastically improve your punching power and become one hell of a puncher yourself. Uh, that's my take on it. I'm not an all-knowing boxing guru. Uh, that's been my experience, and it's been my experience with the boys that I've worked with. Uh, that the punching power is one of the most easy things you can develop and work and, 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 and get up quickly. Uh, the endurance is more difficult, uh, in my humble opinion. Uh, re requires a lot more work, uh, takes a lot more time. But the punching power, which is what we work on, it is the fundamental cornerstone of what we do. Uh, we don't uh, get into uh, tournaments or fights to win points. We get in tournaments and fights to uh, knock the other guy out. Uh, and with judging today and judging with yesteryear to be fair to judging today it's always been messed up and uh, if you can knock a fellow out uh, or, or get a TKO or, or, or a stoppage you should do that uh, and uh, better for you young folks and, and trainers than putting the the decision, the win-loss decision in other people's hands, you just go in there and win. So that's a cornerstone to what we do. Uh, it seems totally contrary to the uh, boxing scholars of the day, of today. Uh, uh, you can't do that, yet we do it and we succeed. We, we do it so much that, that we can't find Tournaments that will accept us or uh, 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 other boxers that will spar. So it's working perfectly. Uh, maybe you all should try it. Then come back and tell me uh, how it works for you. Maybe it doesn't. I know it doesn't work for everyone. I know that boxing is not one size fits all, but... Uh, that's what we do, and it, it, it damn sure works for us. It, as a matter of fact, it works easily. So, 
Uh, a lot of you, you watch what we do and, and you don't, you're like, what in the world are they doing? And what we're doing is, has been proven since time immemorial to work and that's what we do. We do the old things. Uh, there's not much of nothing we do other than some hy hybrid burpees that I just learned about. Uh, due to uh, Bob and Fence journey, a good channel you should go watch. Uh, but uh, other than that, we don't. There's nothing new we do. Everything's very old. It's uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and and into the 70s things. Uh, we we don't do what they've been doing in the 2010s, and we don't do what they're doing in the 2020s. Uh, well, a lot of it we do do that they do. Uh, but anything comes across that's a new thing, this is a new trick, uh, we don't do those things. Um, uh, if I live 10 more years, maybe 10 years down the road after I see a long list of champions that do do those things, maybe I'll tell kids to do it, but not until. Uh, we do what's proven to work. And uh, seems to me with the results I'm getting or we're getting uh, the old things uh, uh, are crushing all this new school technology so we're gonna continue to do what we do nothing flashy about it get your butt in the gym uh, do your calisthenics uh, get your butt to running uh, I would not suggest running on a treadmill that's just me uh, unless you're older. If you're older, yes, I would suggest that. Uh, but you young guys, get out on the road. Get out on a surface and run. Even if it's a, uh, your high school track or a soccer field or basketball court, but get out and run. Do, win do sprints. Uh, we used to call them wind sprints back decades and decades ago when I was a kid. Uh, do those. They're, uh, they've been doing that since time immemorial. That people act like that's something new, and it's not. All this stuff's old. All this stuff's uh, been done before, at least that we do. And uh, just wanted to let you guys know what we do, what we're doing, uh, the results we're getting with this other kid that that we brought in. We have a few more kids uh, that are excelling but they're excelling at their own uh, pace I wish they would uh, well you got those that they dig and they dig deep and then you got some that uh, want to lag through stuff but there's a few guys I'm training right now they're kind of lagging and next couple of weeks will tell the tale on them because I don't charge to train anybody so if they if they're not picking up on it, I would tell them to go. Uh, I will and am going to tell them that they need to go look into another type of uh, sport. So um, that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. Uh, God bless you. Uh, leave us a, a like or a comment. Please subscribe to the channel. The channel's taking off like crazy right now. Getting around 100 to 150 subscribers or so almost every day. Uh, oh, that's good. Uh, I put out a lot of old fights uh, that are not uh, copywritten, so I'm not stealing, you know, uh, using material that is copyrighted that would have to be. That's not open access material. I mean, everything I'm using is open access material and I'm putting these older fights up for you younger guys that you look and you see how it used to be in yesteryear. Uh, some of these fights are in my time, some of them are before my time. I'd suggest you kids, uh, Joe Lewis was before my time and I'd suggest you kids go check Joe Lewis out. He was the world heavyweight champion for 12 years, took on all comers. I'd suggest you guys go check Larry Holmes out. Got a video up with him. Uh, a lot of people bash Larry Holmes, but Larry Holmes was a great champion. Uh, 20 title defenses. Went 48-0 uh, until he got beat 
um, which was questionable. So questionable decisions there. Um, but check these guys out. They were really great, and you can learn by watching these boxing matches. If you want to be an NFL quarterback, uh, it's kind of mandatory you watch NFL football. Uh, so same with boxing. So I put that up. So love, every, much love to everybody, my Christian brothers and sisters out there. I pray that God will bless you and get you through whatever you're going through to uh, and help you and comfort you. To everyone else out there, I am sending love to you, and I want the best for you also. So everybody have a great weekend. It's Friday today, uh, so I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we will see you next week.